Hello again, everyone. Thank you for listening as I continue my discussion on iron deficiency anemia. If you're joining us for the first time, my name is Gigi and this is part two of a series of videos explaining iron deficiency anemia. In the first video, I described the clinical features of the disease. Now I'm going to dive a little deeper into the pathophysiology of the disease. I'm going to explain exactly how do we develop iron deficiency and how does that progress to anemia. Now to answer this question, I want to use an analogy first. Let's take, for example, Beyonce. She earns money as a singer, actress, and performer. Some of it she spends and some of it she saves in the bank. So we have a bank. She puts the money in the bank and keeps it there for storage. If she needs to purchase anything, she can go to the bank and get more money. In one scenario, let's say she is spending more than she saves. Her daughter, Blue Ivy, is getting older. She likes more clothes and toys. Beyonce also wants to travel with Blue Ivy, so she spends, she spends more vacations with her. Little by little, if she makes big purchases, her spending will outweigh her savings, and the money in the bank will start to decrease. Or, let's take another scenario. Let's say the bank got robbed. Pretending that there are no government protections for the bank, and she can't get that money back, and at the time, if she's earning the same amount, then the money in the bank will start to decrease. Now, in this last scenario, let's say all of a sudden, Beyonce's music is no longer mainstream, and no one wants to buy her albums. Yes, it's a hypothetical situation. Then she will be putting in her account in the bank no money at all. And if she, the spending remains the same, without replenishing what she, need, what she spends, then little by little, she will deplete what, what she has in the bank. This is similar to what happens to iron in our bodies. The bank is our body. The money going into the bank is our iron intake. The money Beyonce spent would be what our normal daily losses of iron are. And our body does a pretty good job of trying to maintain that balance between what we take in and what we spend. Now, as I continue to discuss how our bodies consume and take, take in iron, keep this analogy in mind. Let's move on to iron metabolism. Iron absorption is highly regulated, as are most things in our body. The normal amount of iron stored in our body is about 3,000 to 4,000 milligrams. And do you remember from the last video where I said most of it is held? That's right, in the hemoglobin. 60% of the iron in our body is in our red blood cells. This iron is constantly recycled and reused. Red blood cells live in our body for about 120 days. Then after that, after it's ready to die, then they get broken down by our spleen. Iron is recycled to make more red blood cells and all other cellular components of that red blood cell are recycled as well. The next 35% of it is stored in ferritin which binds iron and remains inside macrophages of the liver, spleen, and bone marrow. We saw ferritin in the last video as well. It is one of those laboratory tests we do to determine iron stores. And then we have some that is stored in the muscles. It's stored in a protein called myoglobin, which functions in the same way as hemoglobin except for the muscles. It also binds O2, and it, the way it binds O2 is also with iron. Then lastly, there's a very small amount that is traveling within the blood attached to another protein called transferrin. As you can see, iron is always stored inside cells or bound, bound in blood to a protein. If that weren't the case, iron can be very toxic to our cells. Our iron intake should be about 1 to 2 milligrams per day because on average, we lose about 1 to 2 milligrams a day from sloughed off mucus cells or epithelial cells or for women, by menstruation, and a little bit in, in sweat. So if our body does a great job of keeping our iron stores in balance, how does a person eventually develop iron deficiency? One way would be if we have, an, if we have increased iron needs. This would be equivalent to Beyonce spending more money on her daughter, Blue Ivy, for example. And if you remember that, you'll remember that this happens with pregnant women, infants, and younger children. This occurs because they are in a stage of rapid growth and have much more demand for iron. 
Another way is increased blood loss. When you lose blood, you lose red blood cells. And in those red blood cells, we have hemoglobin. And that hemoglobin stores most of our iron. This would be the case of Beyonce's bank getting robbed. There are no causes that the patient may be aware of, like menstruation or frequent blood donation. But sometimes the patient may not even be aware of any blood loss. This would be the case in any stomach or intestinal disease. Lastly, another way to develop iron deficiency is with decreased intake. This can happen due to your diet, a patient may not be eating the right foods with enough iron, or may be combining foods that inhibit the absorption. Vegetarians, for example, do not eat heme sources of iron, like meat, poultry, and fish. And heme iron is two to three times more efficiently absorbed than iron from plants, the non-heme form. Also, non-heme iron absorption depends on other foods to be eaten at the same meal. Non-heme forms of iron are better absorbed with vitamin C and with other heme forms of iron. Foods that inhibit the absorption of iron are calcium, tea, coffee, whole grains, and legumes. I love coffee, so I was very disappointed to learn this. Malabsorption may be the cause of the decreased intake as well. Iron is absorbed better in its ferric form, the Fe2+, which is why absorption occurs mainly in the duodenum, the first part of the small intestine. The stomach acids that empty into the duodenum aid in the absorption of iron and keep it in that ferric form. If, for example, a patient is taking antacids or has had gastric surgery, this may alter their intake of iron. If any imbalance, any imbalance progresses, progresses, iron deficiency will persist and stores, and stores in the body will, will start begin to be, to be depleted. depleted in the following, in the stages. following stages. First, storage iron One, is depleted. So the iron that's bound to ferritin within the macrophages will be used up first. Then, serum iron will be depleted. In the third stage, a patient will develop a normocytic anemia. The bone marrow, with less iron to work with, will now make few red blood cells, but still try to maintain its normal size. This is called normocytic anemia. Finally, in the last and most severe stage of iron deficiency is when we get a microcytic anemia. Now the bone marrow has even less to work with and makes small and fewer red blood cells. It's at this stage when we see the most prominent and severe symptoms of iron deficiency anemia. This is why the diagnostic tests that we discussed in the last video are very useful. When the patient is not anemic, we can catch an iron, de iron deficiency early enough before it progresses to the later stages. This concludes my discussion on the pathophysiology of iron deficiency anemia. Make sure to watch my next video where I will discuss how to treat iron deficiency anemia. And I will also have an additional surprise at the end. Thank you again for your time.